a very good morning to all of you so we'll be starting today with a very interesting topic positivism post positivism interpretative interpretativism so those are the new topics that are part of your nta syllabus now don't be afraid with the syllabus first of all it's not at all difficult there are a lot of new topics that are added but if you understand the very basics of those topics those would appear to be very very simple the names appear to be big rather and also for those students from hindi background we would be having a quick revision course for 10 days on the exam race hindi channel we'll be covering each unit one day where we would be focusing on the highlights and the most important topics so if you have request for the same on english do let us know uh, we would consider that as well but uh, yes we would be having that at the exam race hindi very soon so stay tuned for that uh, yes devi krishna the provisional admit cards have been released you can just check out the messages that have been going along uh, in the above section so just go through that and you would have an idea about that uh, so let's begin with a very first question on positivism so first few questions would be based on positivism then we'll be moving on post positivism and interpretativism so the first question is here looking forward for the correct answers for the first question which of the following statements are found among the uh, correct aspects or the correct principles of positivism so a lot of you have the correct answer great going so there is no difference in the logic of inquiry across sciences however science is not same as the common sense so there are five principles of positivism very very important to understand so just go through those five principles and you are all set with the correct answer so you have one only as the right answer so science is not same as common sense as according to the principle of uh the topic yes tinakshi we are in the process of development a lot of topics have already been taken and would be live shortly so those are under development so tinakshi definitely these topics are in line and would be available very soon okay the next is positivism has emerged in response to which of those philosophies so under response to which philosophy you have the idea of positivism that came up looking for the correct answer for second question please mention the question number along with the choices so that we can focus on those looking for the right answer for question number 2 it has emerged in rishita has the right answer great so it has emerged in response to idealism so german idealism which is also known as the post kantian uh, uh, post kant concept or uh, la later immanuel kant concepts that it has been called as was a movement that started in germany during the late 18th and the 19th centuries and that was one of the basis that led to formation of the concept of positivism so broadly speaking positivism is is a science which deals uh, is a concept which deals about scientific understanding and verifying the facts so bringing in authentic knowledge objective knowledge without biasness is the sole idea now once you have an idea about what is positivism you can understand uh, these sentences and you have to find out which is an incorrect statement again a very very important question so i have already uh, talked about the basics here yes rahmat it's the 18th and the 19th century period so question 3 looking for the right answer no uh devi krishna has the right answer great so positivists are strong realist because they stress on the things that could be observed that are empirical in nature and that are measurable however positivism divides the statement into three categories and that is true false and meaningless so meaningless is another category that they consider so statement 2 is the incorrect one one is the correct statement 
a simple question so most of the questions from this section would be theoretical in nature you need to know the aspect that's it so the concept of positivist school is related to criminal behavior so which positivist school so definitely a uh, very direct question here <laughs> yes devi krishna great going okay so you have the right answers here so it's criminology now criminology or the the positivist school of criminology could be further subdivided into anthropological and sociological basis to understand the criminal behavior so that's the question that was there very clear from the question itself now which of these schools of positivism positivism did give rise to neo positivism so looking for the correct answer for question 5 looking for the correct answer for question 5 great so uh, lakshman kumar rasik a lot of you were right answer great going it seems you have been preparing too well for the exam good competition out here okay so logical positivism is the right answer now logical positivism is further classified under two which is empiricism and rationalism now both of those schools of uh, the logical positivism focus or give rise to the concept of neo positivism later on so logic logical positivism or what is logical uh, empiricism later form the neo positivism approach uh, we would be considering these in detail in our class on positivism that we have covered now the com these three stages of positivism what is very very important to know here yes devi krishna so first correct answer for question 6 and that's a surprise question looking for the first correct answer so uh, Mo mohini has the first answer great mohini please send in your address to admin@examrace.com now here what we need to understand is the three stages of positivism have been classified as theological stage metaphysical stage and your positive stage the theo uh, the theological stage sorry is further sub classified under three and that is Polyth uh, the fetism, which was succeeded by polytheism, and later on polytheism was succeeded by monotheism. That uh, basically that means the first two came was fetism, where inanimate objects like stone, trees were worshipped. Later on there was many gods that were worshipped under polytheism, and later on they moved on to worship of just one god under monotheism. So that's the flow that was taken into account. The next is the sequence. of the scientific developments uh, uh, that developed according to the comte's thought on positive scientific stage so which is highly positive to the least positive we would have a understanding here so question 7 looking for the right answer we have to move from the most scientific or most positive most objective to least objective and that would be the right answer so looking for the correct so right gurveen arshna deepa lot of you with right answers so uh, mathematics astronomy ph physics chemistry biology and lastly sociology is the correct on order so that's the order under which comte's thought on positive scientific stage uh, ex were explained very very important question and that forms the basis of the uh, the theory of august comte the next is the personalities which is regarded as the first working class adherent to comte's idea on positivism is again a very direct uh, question uh, this person uh, question number 8 so kamini already has the answer rasik also great so fabian magnan uh, was the person who was appointed as a successor after comte uh, for the for being the president of the positive society uh, after his death and he was considered as the first working class adherent to his philosophy and the ideas now which of the following statements are held valid for post positivism post positivism which of those concepts are kept valid question number 9 looking for the right answer 
Janki has a question about question 6. So question 6, you have both of them are the right answer because polytheism was succeeded by monotheism and fetism was succeeded by polytheism. So both of them would be the right statements. Question 9, looking for the right answers. So yes, a um, lot of you came up with the right answers here but uh, still uh, no. Uh, no. For Irfanullah has the right answer here. Now all data sets under determine theory. That's right. Okay. And that's valid for post-positivism. However, uh, this uh, post-positivism believed that all observations are theory laden. They are, uh, there are negative results which can be explained due to human error. And generally, no general conclusion can be logically simplified to give a kind of infinite number of examples that could be there. So uh, one only is the right statement to explain the concept of post-positivism. This post-positivism was, I could say, critical realism and that was intermittent between the uh, interpretativeness, interpretativism and positivism. So positivism we say is fully objective. Interpretatism we say is subjective and post-positivism is somewhere in between which inculcates all the objective aspects and tries to bring in certain uh, subjective aspects into it. So post-positivism believes that reality exists but unlike positivists they believe that reality can be known only imperfectly. Now this statement is part of which of the following concepts under post-positivism. So post-positivism you have the three concepts that are given epistemology, ontology and exology. Which of those you think is the part of the idea where we say reality can, not, can be known only imperfectly. So question number 10, 10, a lot of you with right answer. So that's B obvious. So that's ontology. Just go back to the class on logic where we talked about epistemology, ontology and axiology. Uh, just go back onto the paper one playlist at exam race channel. So you would have the concepts there and if you are subscribed you would receive the notifications for the upcoming videos on positivism, post positivism, normative uh, Approach, ideographic approach, a priori, uh, a post, uh, a posteriori. So those are some of the important topics. Then value education is another topic that we have covered, and a lot of topics from econometrics are in development. So those would be available before your net examination, and definitely uh, expected questions on higher education. So scientific method and observable and measurable facts is part of which of these positivist research philosophy? Again, a very direct question. So question 11, I already have uh, the answers here. Question 11, so uh, great. So epistemology is the right answer. Now scientific methods and observable, measurable facts are part of epistemological approach. The next is, these are the statements relating to the post-positivism. So which of those are relevant to the post-positivism that you have to explain? As I said, you have positivism, you have interpretativism. Between the two, you have post-positivism that occur. So post-positivism -po is highly objective in nature. Interpretativism is highly subjective in nature. Po positivism we focus on a nomothetic approach here we focus on an ideographic approach and post positivism brings in subjective as well as objective aspects so it is towards a critical realist which believes that there is reality which is independent of our thinking our thought process might reveal something as a right answer but in reality that does not exist so reality is different from what we think so you have one only as the right answer here the next is which of the following is incorrect about post positivism so you have positivism follows the philosophy of constructivism that is correct but it is uh, the uh, positivism post positivism which follow the philosophy of reductionism that is incorrect so most of the it's it's written incorrectly here sorry so the post positivist basically believes in constructivism so the first statement is incorrect and positivism is believed in reductionism so second also is incorrect so both of the statements are incorrect here so both of the statements are incorrect since it's asked incorrect here so i repeat again constructivism is the basis for post positivism however positivism talks about dehumanizing a human being and reducing it 
then only you can apply scientific aspects and bring it to objectivity so both the statements are incorrectly mentioned here the next is which theories explicitly promote a normative approach to international relations by taking a, into account the ethics question 14 looking for the right answer right so post positivism is the right answer it refers to international uh, relations which reject positivism the idea is empirist observation of the natural sciences can be applied to social sciences as well so taking into account the ethics along with international research uh, relations is something that is important the next question is what is the underlying methodology behind the philosophy of interpretativism so this is something that we just talked in the previous slide so the answer is already there for you question 15 you already have the answer for it we already discussed it the hierarchy how positivism to post positivism grew uh, so devi krishna has the right answer momita wants me to repeat something so please refer which question you wants me to uh, you want me to repeat okay so as i said positivism post positivism and interpretativism so post positivism you have the quantitative aspects and interpretativism you deal on qualitative aspects which is ideographic approach so qualitative is the right answer the next is which of the following is not regarded as a variation of interpretativism so variation of interpretativism when we say you have hermeneutics phenomenology and symbolic reactionism interactionism which are variations of interpretativism however scientificism where we talk about a broad belief that the assumptions of the physical and the natural sciences are equally important is not taken into account so you have b c and d as the right options and c a is the only incorrect option uh shivangi these topics are available in the new topic book so that's uh, that's there you have all the topics that we have covered uh which are based on the new topics some of the students have doubts about uh, they are not able to understand the questions and the concept i understand since they are no, they are new topics you have not read those any of the time uh, directly solving a question would be difficult for you so if you uh, go through the videos that would be coming shortly by next week i believe uh, you would have a better understanding of the concept once you have that you can come back and solve the questions again and that would make the concept much more clearer to you if you have further doubts you can uh, uh, just contact our support team at adminet exam days the next is consider the following research methods which of the research method is associated with interpretativism so again a direct question Uh, Govin wants me to repeat question sixteen. Okay, so uh, variations of interpretativism. So if you have understood what is interpretativism, which is highly subjective in nature, so when there is subjectivity that is involved, I could say it could be in the form of symbols that could be there. So symbolic interaction, symbolic logic could be one of the ways. Phenomenology, where you are trying to understand the world directly by experiencing the worldly phenomena, could be another way. hermeneutics where you are trying to interpret and understand uh, the text or the wisdom literature that is there that could be one of the ways so all these three explain interpretativism which is subjective okay so there is the element of subjectivity in research and this is one of the basic philosophies of research model so if you go through the research onion model that we have covered in one of the videos that would be coming up shortly it is not yet live you would understand how the various approaches run okay the next is the idea associated to interpretativism so as we said it is subjective so you have qualitative traits that are measured now which of those measure qualitative tra traits definitely doc personal documents and participant observation measure qualitative traits questionnaire surveys are usually used for uh, quantitative analysis we could say so one and two would be the right answer since it's interpretativism which is qualitative in nature 
Govind, I believe uh, we have repeated the question. Uh, yes, Momita, we would do the class. We have uh, already covered the classes. Those are in development and would be live shortly. Okay. The next is, we can say interpretative approach follows which of these? So both of those are part of interpretative approach. So relativist ontology which talks about uh, approach which perceives reality as intersubjectivity is one of the concepts and then definitely subjective epistemology is another important concept. So both of those are correct. So as Ishan, Purnima, great Kamini, Isha, great. I see a lot of you did it very well. So you are well prepared with what we have already covered. Okay, so uh, question 19. Which of the personalities is credited with anti-positivist uh, so interpretativism is also called as anti-positivist approach so which of them is co concerned with anti-positivist approach looking for the right answer right Weber is the right answer Mohini but yes there is besides Weber also one more that is George Simmel uh, so George Simmel and Weber both of them are right answers so both one and three would be the right answer. Uh, there was a lot of confusion here because Max Weber, uh, sorry, Max Weber, sorry, uh, is one very well-known name that you have come across, and some have heard about Simmel, so they were confused. So both of them are related to interpretativism. The last question again on anti-positivism or interpretativism is given. You have to find out which of the following statement is incorrect. So looking for the right answer, question 20 looking for the right answer, a little tricky question that's there. You have to, uh, I'll give you a hint, you have to focus on to the differences of positivism and interpretativism here. Once you are focusing on the differences, you will be able to answer that. These are new topics, very, very important. Expect at least two to three questions from this section what we have covered today. So cover the theory perfectly. Uh, very, very important topics. I would repeat again, the logical section, a very important topic. I believe a lot of you are struck with question 20. So let me help you sail through. Okay, no, it's not both, which is incorrect. Okay, the focus of the interest in interpretivism is unique or deviant. So that's correct because we are focusing on individualistic study since it's an ideographic study it's based on individualism which you would understand here when you would understand the difference between nomothetic and ideographic the next is the goal of interpretativism is not a strong prediction but rather it is a weak prediction strong prediction is considered when there is objectivity and this objectivity is seen where it is seen in positivism so again that is a difference that's there between the interpretativism and positivism very very important concept very very logical concept nothing to remember a lot but a lot to understand I would say so how you proceed with your research philosophies uh, that's the sole idea and once you are clear with that I believe all your doubts are sorted out uh, good a lot of you have uh, the right answers uh, postal book new topics yes Monica you would have the link in the uh, description below so you can check that out and yes uh, these are covered in the lectures that we would be covering Yadav uh, in the coming sessions uh, pos positivism post positivism we I have already covered it but that's in development which would be live shortly so definitely before your exam uh, Rehmat wants me to repeat interpretativism. Okay, so I just give you a summary a recap of these topics again positivism after that, you had post-positivism and interpretativism. The idea is positivism talks about objectivity. Interpretativism, interpretativism talks about subjectivity. So when you are talking about individual study, autobiography, uh, their personal documents, it's all subjective knowledge. 
Positivism is highly objective in nature. And post-positivism is an approach which is towards critical realism, a midway, a midway between the two. I hope that's clear. Sorry, whosoever answered first, there were a lot of answers coming up, so might be I missed it. Okay, uh, Momita, all the topics that you want me to cover, please send a request at admin at examrace.com. So it's admin at examrace.com. I have the link for you here. Uh, please send the request for the topics there. Value education, environmental education would be coming soon. Uh, Govind Kumar, we would be having a quick uh, summary of all the net paper one 10 topics in uh, Hindi at exam race Hindi uh, that would be starting probably tomorrow so you would have the live classes which would be scheduled for 10 days uh, that would be a quick recap a quick revision for all the topics unit by unit and the key highlights which you need to cover in all the topics so that's that should be there Rehmat I believe if you go through the videos that that would be coming shortly that would make it much more clear uh, Preeti wants me to explain the point, uh, question 20 again. So question 20, it's basically focusing on the differences between positivism and interpretativism. Positivism, as we know, is objective. You have group studies that are there. However, under interpretativism, we are talking about ideographic approach, individual studies. So its focus is on unique and deviant. So the first statement stands correct. The second statement is interpretativism is strong prediction that is incorrect. Interpretativism is subjective, so there cannot be strong prediction for something. Strong prediction can come only when there is objectivity. And where is objectivity? Objectivity is in positivism. So the statement too becomes incorrect. I hope that makes it clear. So we would be meeting next Thursday, not Tuesday, for the live class at 10.30. And that class would be uh, the topics on... Uh, your logic so next two classes that are there would be coming up with the topics on logic very very important uh, so do join us at 10 30 next thursday uh, for the live class have a wonderful day ahead